Now entering Nerdist.com. Hello and welcome to Today We Learned. Welcome, guys. You having a good day? I certainly hope oh, so. Yeah, welcome, guys. Thanks for uh, downloading, this. downloading this. this is, uh, it's been a you know, fun week, fun, uh, fun bunch of episodes, huh? Yeah, we've, uh, we've had quite the run. And you know what, run. guys? The fun doesn't stop here. It continues for another X amount of minutes. I don't know the total run time. Yeah, it's a uh, you know, it's a very fun episode. You guys are you guys have been lucky the last you know you've had a really good like, yeah you uh, guys you guys and girls you've had a you know I had, I uh, use guys as a gender non specific term yeah. for a group of people to whom I have a general degree of affection for. Yeah. Yeah, it's been fun. It's yeah. uh, you know been a lot of fun couple of weeks. Fun, yeah, fun things. Everybody's got some really fun things in the works. Everybody, mm-hmm. you know. Really cool, cool beans. Yeah, and uh, today's episode is no exception. We have a uh, very funny, very talented uh, actress on the show today. Uh, you likely have seen her on Sons of Anarchy, The Glades, The yeah, OC. The OC. Uh, yeah. So let's. She's been in a lot of things. Yeah. She's around, and you know, she's got a couple radio shows. Exactly. And, you know, very talented. So you may have heard around. her dulcet tones as yeah. well. Yeah. Dulcet, but, uh, you know, you say that, I still don't know what that means. I'm going to look that up one of these days. Uh, it's similar to mellifluous. Oh, uh, <laughs> God damn you, smart words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, SAT prep. Hey, I'm as mellifluous. How do I smell that? Yeah, yeah listen. Did you mean? Uh, fuck you, Google, <laughs> for not knowing how to smell things. <laughs> Here, damn. let me help. <laughs> Google, I wish you Thanks, Google. Thanks, Google. Siri needs to, like... If, if there was a combination of Google and Siri, that would be the best. Because Siri never Siri's like, "Did you mean?" And he's like, "No, I said what I mean." Are you sure? But Google's like, "I'll say, I'll type in what I mean," and Google's still like, "Did you mean?" It's like, "Ah, oh, no, gotcha." Yeah. You. And another, just apropos of nothing, the Siri voice reminded me. Uh, Ways. Yeah. You can uh, have it switch over to Terry Crews's voice. That's new, right? Yeah, yeah, I did that recently. It was a little jarring on the way to the airport. Um, I, I said, "Turn left." It's fun. It's like traffic ahead. <laughs> It's it's fun, but I would not recommend it for extended use because uh, it's. That would get so annoying. Yeah, I'm just not not even annoying. It's just like his delivery. It takes a while sometimes, so yeah. I'm like, oh, I would have missed that if oh, I didn't yeah. know where I was going. Yeah. Um. But anyway, cool. guys, back to the episode at hand. Back got a good to one the for you episode today. Episode at hand. Yeah. So let's uh, let's do this, yeah, shall so we'll, we? We'll get to this today. Yeah, we, we learn, learn number fifty nine with Kristen Renton. <laughs> Gentlemen. Let's broaden our minds. Hello and welcome to Today We Learned. Welcome back to another fun-filled episode. I'm Dan. And I am Razzle, as always. uh, (laughs) I'd be worried if you weren't. And uh, today I'm Steven. Uh, so there we go. That's a thing. Um, yeah, this is a you know it's a fun episode. We got a very great guest here in the studio, just sitting right across from us, being very very quiet. Yeah, as uh, you may have read in the episode title. Yeah, yeah, if you have if you've read and before you downloaded, or if you just press you know if you unlock your phone and randomly press yeah. buttons. Unless maybe you're maybe you're blind and someone accidentally just put this on for you. Yeah, or unless you're blind and you have one of those really cool uh contraptions that connects to your computer or your phone that that uh prints braille. Really? Yeah, those are real things. That's a lot. Yeah, that's are... wow. Yeah, people the do that. The future is now. I love the future, man. Uh yeah, this guest uh you you may have seen her on uh, quite a few things. She's a very talented actress and producer and according to IMDb self <laughs> uh, I hope so. <laughs> you've seen her on Anger Management. You've seen her on Sons of Anarchy. You've seen her in The Glades. You've seen her on uh, my favorite on this list, The OC. And now you'll hear her dulcet tones on this podcast. Absolutely, this podcast. Today we learned, uh, I believe her uh, her credit would be self, if I understand yeah, how this, this works. Would, this would go into that category. This would definitely go into that. I, yeah. I'm not a scientist, but I think I'm getting the hang of uh, IMDb <laughs> you, here. I hope they don't have scientists working there. <laughs> they got expert uh, IMDb artists. Yes. I think. Yeah, me and my buddy the other day we were talking about how there's now there's expert social media like marketers, and it's like social media hasn't been around long enough for there to be actual experts in this field, but yet people have that title, and it's just like, oh, that's amazing. Anytime that's awesome. I see the the phrase guru, social media guru, yeah. in someone's Twitter uh, bio, <laughs> I immediately unfollow that's or block them. <laughs> It's like, not the truth. 
yeah. let something be around for at least yes. 20 years before you can be a guru on the Yeah, on the but enough about us. Let's introduce our guest. <laughs> Absolutely, Dan. Go ahead. Uh, we have Kristen Renton with us today. Kristen Renton. Oh, God, and surround sound. Yeah, I like right? it. Yeah. Nice. Just Are in you... case, I just want to make sure everyone heard it. Oh, let me mute yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, this is only podcast number 59, and Dan uh, has his cell phone on. <laughs> loud, by it's the right. way. It's not even as vibrate. It's loud. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you, I, re- I rarely have it on uh, anything but, <laughs> but deadly silent. Deadly, deadly silent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kristen, oh. thanks for joining us. Yeah, Finally, we've been trying. I know. I know. Me and you've been chatting for a while, trying to get you on here. I know. I like to travel, apparently, yeah, a I see lot. This. A so lot. there's that. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for having me. Thank I'm you. I'm glad for I can finally come and join yeah. and yeah. make this thank work. You. She, uh, this is via remote. She's on her phone. <laughs> I know. Yeah. She's this is uh, she's calling in right now while, while she's at uh, a yeah, bar she, watching the football game. She, she was telling me so much about. <laughs> I know. I was like, you do realize it's Sunday, right? Yeah, she's, I was you just, do realize that I'm supposed to be watching football. Today. I was just watching the games uh, before I came here. I got yelled at for missing the Philly game that's going to happen mm-hmm. in about 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I'm like, yep. Uh, how long is this going <laughs> to? Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't worry. They'll just get past the boring stuff at the beginning. <laughs> exactly. It's okay. I can I can miss the first quarter. Yeah, fair enough. I'm, I'm good. Second half <laughs> is the most. <laughs> We're good. Uh, Kristen, as usual, our listeners know this, as do you. Mm. Uh, we uh, we like to start off every episode with the guests providing either a fun fact about themselves or something you learned recently. And uh, if this is a real thing, uh, I'm very curious to discuss this because you briefly gave us a, a sneak peek uh, before we started recording. So what do you have for us today? Well, a, f- a fun fact about me is uh, I do see dead people. Yes. <laughs> This is the thing. Go, 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 go. Oh, okay. was this so, before? Yes. Was this before or after Six Sense came out? Um, actually, both. It oh, was wow! Before and uh, I, I actually talked about one of my more uh, crazy experiences. I did an episode of Celebrity Ghost Stories, okay. and um, it it happened down on the Queen Mary, down in Long Beach. Um, but I had been seeing and hearing things my whole life, and I just kind of. Never really. Th- uh, no, it's not the alcohol. <laughs> no. Okay, maybe a little. Yeah. No, but um, I uh, yeah, my whole life I've kind of had these really strange, unusual experiences, and um, you know, I would hear things or see things, and uh, it kind of all came to a head when I was down on the Queen Mary, and I actually got chased by a ghost. Oh wow! Oh yikes! So that was intense. Yeah. And and before then, I had just you know. E- a lot of people like to say, oh, yeah, I saw something out of the corner of my eye, but I just thought, oh, you know, I'm imagining things or, you know, my mind's playing tricks on me or whatever. And um, I, I, some of those, you know, I'm like, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. But this, I mean, when, when people validate the story that you experience because other people have had the same experience without you even knowing, then you kind of got to go, okay, yeah, that was not my mind playing tricks yeah, on me. Yeah, especially when there's uh, an experience like that where it's hard to rationalize in any exactly. other way. When you exactly. have someone else who's had a similar experience, it makes it... You know, it, it validates it yeah. in a sense, so you feel like you're not going crazy after all. Absolutely, and and the fact that this person that I described truly existed. There's proof that he was there. There's a whole story that I didn't even know because I had I had never thought like I'm going to research mm-hmm. the Queen Mary before I go stay on it. You know, I never really. Yeah. No, you didn't go there that. in October, right? No, actually, <laughs> it wasn't no. a character. No, it was like it was like in a May or April or May. Okay, or something. A yeah. distinctly non-spooky month. Exactly, very distinctly non-spooky. Yes. but I love going there. Um, over like when they do the whole scary Halloween. Oh yeah, I, I feel I'm always blown away at how many uh, haunted houses and things like that pop up all oh, over yeah. LA. Not Scary it. Farm. <laughs> yeah, and then they always it's have a Scary like, Berry puns. Farm. They always well, have puns like that. And the I, names. I'm surprised by all these people. Um, in the valley, because I lived in the valley for mm-hmm. like ten years, yeah. and uh, these random people turn their houses into haunted houses, and you can find them online. And so yeah. anybody can come to your house. It, I'm like, why would you invite people into <laughs> yeah. your house? like Are random they free people? Or do they charge? Maybe they're just huge so, fans of Halloween. I, hey, you know, I mean, more power yeah. to you. But I'm like, you know, you all the crazies come out then, yeah. and you're mm-hmm. you're actually like designing something to bring them to your house. That yeah. to me, is yeah, just crazy. unless it's like uh, you really know all the people in your neighborhood, and it's going to be a bunch of oh, all the neighborhood kids are coming by. Even yeah, then, no, hell no. It's all online. I mean, there are people coming from everywhere. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'd rather no. I'll take them somewhere else. See, build it out of cardboard. I mean, I guess I kind of understand a little bit because on St. Patrick's Day, I decorate my house up like an Irish pub and invite strangers. In yeah, drink, so. <laughs> throw. Up I could get behind that. I could get so behind I that. Do that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm scrolling through here. Trying to find fun facts about ghosts to segue this. Uh, well, this quick thing. sidebar: Why are all hayrides haunted? 
That's Why is true. this? It's a, it's there's, I don't think there's a single one that is not haunted. Well, because nobody would just go on a hayride. hayride yeah. yeah, that's true. That's it's true. I mean, you can see the entirety hey. of the orchard from the back of a cart. <laughs> hey, Leanne, you want to go on a hayride this weekend? <laughs> haunted Segway tour. <laughs> oh, my God. But to, uh, to go back to seeing ghosts, uh, I haven't had any... Uh, ectoplasmic otherworldly experiences but no. I have a bunch of friends who have oh, yeah? and a couple of them they've both had instances of sleep paralysis where mm. they wake up in the middle of the night and they can't move any of their body parts or anything they're just tr- sort of trapped in their body they're aware of their surroundings yeah. and one one of my friends told me that she saw this sort of like weird like glowing orb like figure floating above her and that is terrifying you know what that is astro projection Really? That I, I heard about that. That's when you actually your project being, your being outside of you your leave your self. body and yeah. you go to another plane. And a lot of times you don't either a fully get all the way back in before your actual body mm-hmm. is aware, or um, or you may like slam back in and yeah. then you, like you take a moment to kind of reconnect. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Listen that, to me. Like I know it, all these. Yeah. Well, things. no, it's it, <laughs> it makes sense. I'm like, I'll oh, it sounds what. good. There yeah. was I was reading about about that stuff because Sinbad. Used to do a lot of that. The comedian Sinbad, Sinbad. yeah, not the would astro project yeah. Sinbad Dream I don't know Warrior. Why that just cracked yeah. me the fuck up? Oh, but that really cracked very, me the yeah. fuck up. And he was for, big into it. I, he was on the Pete Holmes podcast uh, a few months ago, and oh he was talking God. about how he used to do that. And I was reading into it because that's it's that stuff fascinates me. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a skeptic to all of that stuff, but I. This but is, I love Sinbad, so. But I'm a huge fan of Sinbad. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, and he would do that, and I started reading up on it. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm going to try doing this. So then I started reading about how, like, if you, like, the reason he stopped and a lot of people quit, a lot of people who do it, they stop because, like, while you're astral projecting and while you're, like, soul and while you're, you know, uh-huh. like, like, if I went to go visit my brother in Michigan while my body's on my bed, like, there, uh-huh. like, demons could get in my body and then start prancing Other things can, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You invite myself. other things in, yeah. Yeah, but that's so cool. So if you ever do that, one thing, like, I was reading, too, like, if you, like, what you do is, because you'll wake up out of nowhere, like, because you're thirsty, apparently. So if you are astral projecting. I always have water by my bed. Yeah. So you do that? I probably do. I probably do. Well, I, you know, a lot of times, look, this is, poor Bill, (laughs) the CEO of my life right (laughs) now. Um, I, uh, I, like, I'll. I'll be in a dead sleep yeah. and you know, whether or not I'm having dreams, I, a lot of times I don't even pay attention, but I'll stop breathing. Yeah. And so I'll literally sit up in my bed, like, <gasps> and yeah. take a really deep breath. And that's what wakes me up because yeah. I've stopped breathing. Oh, so wow. I, a lot of times I'm like, Oh, I must've been out. And yeah. like, I'd slammed back in and had to jump start my breathing again or something. I yeah. don't know. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's at all related to, uh, you know, when you have those like, not necessarily those. I think the closest parallel would be like those dreams where you're falling and then all of a sudden your bed, you just, your whole body just yeah. spazzes out. Yeah. I don't know if that's related at all, but I've had those even when I'm not falling. Thing is, like, there's there's no harm in believing in something like that because yeah. if yeah. it's not true, then who are you hurting? Exactly. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And Why not have fun thinking that that's if it's possible? it's true, fucking teach me how to do that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Then I need to rewatch those paranormal activity movies, get some tips. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have a, my friend's girlfriend, uh, well, my friend's friend, they don't, I don't know if they are labeling it or anything like that. Uh, I love that you just put them on blast. Um, hey, Robin. Are they dating? No. I don't know. Uh, she does Reiki, and that, you know, at first I'm like, all right, well, that kind of seems kind of hocus pocus to me, but it's like, like I'm a huge skeptic and I don't believe in a lot of things, but then again, it's like, if I have friends that I trust, you know, yeah. other things with their opinions on other things, and they tell me they can see and feel and do things like that, it's like, why should I not believe you? So, like, if you can see ghosts, that's really cool, like... I want to. I wish I could. Now I'm just jealous. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's. I <laughs> actually. Like, hey, I think that's kind of a great way to look at it. I'm just going to start telling people I can do really cool shit. Yeah. <laughs> With the no, nothing yeah, to back yeah, it up. You guys, you guys have nothing. <laughs> I know, right? Start making up shit like that. Like, oh, I can. You know, I. I can see things. But yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we can't. Yeah. Uh, Kristen, you are. You were born uh, in Colorado. I was. Yeah. I, uh, I have some fun facts here from Mental Floss. Every now and then, Mental Floss, especially their Twitter feed, they'll do uh, fun facts about this, fun facts oh. about that. Um, so I got some fun facts uh, about Colorado right here. Okay. Uh, at 53 square miles, uh-huh. the Denver International Airport is twice the size of Manhattan. I did not know that. Yeah. My dad, I think, helped design that airport, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you, your dad's I should a, probably uh, check in on that, yeah. shouldn't I? That's awesome. Your dad's a designer? He's a civil engineer. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So he designs airports, or what are, yeah, the, he, what are some he, other cool he, things he's done? He's done uh, runways. He's done... Um, he did his 
thesis, I want to say, and his graduate school stuff on bridges. I, I feel a lot bridges. of civil engineers do uh, bridge work. Yeah. yeah, but he was also in the Air Force, so he um, he was in the Air Force for uh, over 30 years. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. Hence why I moved so much. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> uh, no U.S. president or vice president has hailed from Colorado. Well, shit, I should have gone into politics. Yeah. <laughs> There's still yeah. time. Damn. Oh God! I would I would yeah. literally murder everyone in Washington. Well, yeah. Well, you also you can't. <laughs> I probably would. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would have Secret Service at my and house. That's I say. Kristen Renton. R e n t o n. For those I mean, of you, I already have my phone tapped. Yeah. I'm sure, so I'm not worried about government it. listening. <laughs> this podcast super popular at the DOD. <laughs> I file my taxes yeah. every year. Uh, how awful would it be if you're that guy at the NSA assigned to listen to a fuck ton of podcasts? <laughs> oh, I know, right? Oh, hi, honey. You're like, I, I used to enjoy these. Now I just sit on the treadmill in silence. Oh, Seriously. Back it up. Did she say something about murdering everybody? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I can't be bothered to rewind. That's in an alternate universe where I would have gone into politics. Yeah. Clearly yes. that did not happen, and I play yeah. a porn star on TV, so we yes. just went in the complete opposite uh, direction. Opposite direction. <laughs> However, a, so lot there's of, that. Uh, a lot of government officials probably frequent porn stars. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, maybe you're just studying for the uh, there you your, go. your, your yeah. method. Taking your the, method re the reverse agent. approach. Exactly, exactly. Method sleeper agent. Uh, Colorado is home to over 200 breweries. Which, that I believe. Yeah, which yeah. puts it behind only California and Washington. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> the Pacific Northwest is probably just riddled with yeah. them. There's yeah. not a lot else um, to do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you can go to Breckenridge, see a nice well, play, or, <laughs> a nice or, play or buy a t-shirt. I'll tell you what else there is to do, though, in Colorado. Uh, constructed in 1905. Go on. The Kit Carson County Carousel in Burlington, Colorado, is the oldest <laughs> wooden merry-go-round in the United States. It is also the only antique carousel in the country to still have its original paint on both the animals and the scenery panels. It's open daily from Memorial Day to Labor Day, so right now it's closed. So, yeah, so, so that sucks for you. Good Go for see that. the abandoned, creepy Kit Carson <laughs> County <laughs> Carousel. Have you been to said carousel? Have you been to Burlington? No, I have not. I actually, uh, we left uh, Denver when I was 18 months old, so gotcha. I don't really remember living there. So deep roots. Deep, deep yeah. roots. Deep roots. <laughs> I finally went back for the first time since I left last year. Nice. So, yeah. Where did you uh, move to after? Uh, then we went to Orlando. Oh, gotcha. Orlando. Where in Orlando did you live? Uh, we lived, well, I remember the name of my um, neighborhood. It was uh, Southern Oaks. Okay. Uh, we were not far from Disney. Fair enough. Mm. Okay. So more by uh, like Kissimmee then. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Close Wait, just to, just to go back to uh, Colorado real quick. Yes. Uh, when you fly into Denver International Airport, um, I don't know if you guys have been there before to the Denver airport, but yep. it's kind of hard to miss. Oh, there close. is a giant blue statue of a horse. It's Ooh. the st statue of the Denver Bronco. The, his official name is the Blue Mustang. Locals call him Blucifer. It's a 32-foot tall statue of a bucking Bronco designed by artist Luis Jimenez. But there's like a lot of bad juju around the statue because when he was building it in 2006... Jimenez died oh. when a piece of the 9,000-pound sculpture fell on him and severed an artery in his leg. Holy Hello. shit. Yeah. It's right up your alley. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Super into horse-based murders. If you go there, then you'll see them. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. I'm like, where are you going with this, Bill? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Call me a klutz a little bit? No, no, no. no I would agree. <laughs> No, you see dead people. I do. Because I should go. I, you, you know, very valid point. I should go hang around the the Lucifer. Yeah, just hang out with Lucifer and be like, "Where's the yeah?" Blue Tell me your Blucifer. secrets, horse man. And yeah, seriously. No, hold on. This is a, a Bronco, right? Yeah. No, what a Bronco was a horse. Correct? It's a horse. Yeah, it's a horse. It's also the name of uh, Denver's professional Denver's football professional team. team. Isn't Blucifer. it technically like a wild Mustang? Yeah. Ish. Yeah. That's what I thought. It's also a uh, popular Jeep. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, oh yeah. God. I yeah. yeah. God, when I was growing Ford up, Bronco, I wanted a Bronco. Every, yeah, Bronco. I think so. Oh, I still want one. Two door, take the roof off, roll yeah. bars. Oof. Yeah, that was like the that was like <laughs> the most sought after car in uh, my high school. Everyone yeah. was like, oh, oh, so bad. I love I love them so much. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh it's funny that you bring up horses. Oh yeah. Because I have some. Uh, some you got some horse facts? facts? I got some. You got equine. some horse? Well, giddy I got up. some equine here. Some equine facts. I believe that's what they're they're referred to. They're 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 uh, parent. Uh, 
genus is, is equinus or something like that? I'm not sure. Well, Chris, you're a huge fan of... Why it's called equestrian. Yes, yes. yeah. Uh, I have uh, compiled these animal... It's, it's funny that we bring up uh, Broncos because that kind of is a good segue into these facts. But I had these animal facts here, a couple of these here, only because, Chris, and I know you're, you're a huge advocate of uh, animals. And, yes, on, on absolutely. Twitter, you're always, you know, putting, you know, animal... I annoy the shit out of people with and, it, yes. <laughs> yeah, I have you on so board. I'd rather... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I get it. I like animals. No. Uh, she uh, she's a very she's a huge advocate for uh, animal safety and, and anti animal cruelty or how what's the I would yes. assume you're not pro animal cruelty. No, I'm not pro animal. <laughs> it's a kind of a yeah, controversial no. stance to take. I, I do a lot with um, different rescue organizations nice. and different. Uh, I'm raising money for a sanctuary right now. Um, I work with Box to Rescue Los Angeles, but also with just conservation and uh, raising awareness with a lot of the issues. Like um, right now, we we finally got them to do the. Uh, the hunting of the wolves up in to cancel all that stuff that was going on. Like they were able to shoot them from airplanes and stuff oh, yikes. from oh. helicopters. And I'm just like, really? Yeah, well, for, yeah. No, for no reason. Yeah, I mean, that's fine were... in a movie like The Gray, but less so in real life. <laughs> well, I mean, or if we're gonna if we're gonna get right down to it, uh, the beginning of um, uh, the thing. With, oh yeah, with Mr. Kurt Russell. Remember when they were flying that helicopter movie. and there that dogs chasing and they're like, oh, they they uh, they shot the dog thinking it was mm-hmm. or whatever, vice versa, but it was the dog. The dog was running because the dog had. Uh, he knew the thing was there. Yeah. Can I just pause and say yeah. that um, Ted on your shirt looks yeah. somewhat like um, a wild Mustang? Yeah, yes, Ted uh, I have a Ted that, that hair. Uncle Ted, yeah. You know, he's got a yeah. mane. He's got the mane. He does. It's, he has quite a mane and, and yeah. a kind of a weird, angry look on his face. Yeah, well, I, that's know, never left. <laughs> <laughs> he's angry because, you know, he wanted to go hunt deer, but they outlawed him. <laughs> yeah. them from He's angry because he wanted people to take him seriously, <laughs> but he's gone so far up the deep end that no one will. Exactly. Uh, tell you what, he's such a nut. But man, his early his early guitar playing was so yeah, good. Yeah, that but. cat scratch fever. I, <laughs> I got a cat scratch fever. Oh uh, my god! That's funny. <laughs> Anyways, back to horses and the equestrian uh, genus. Uh, mules. I learned this the other day. Uh, there's actually the reason why like there's the phrase jackass is because that's a male donkey, mm-hmm. and then there's Jenny ass. Which is like a female donkey. Oh, so we'll huh. never hear Jenny ass no. anymore. No, see, because she keeps her mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does. She's. St- yeah, I was gonna make it. I was gonna go somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> like, and I'm gonna I'll do refrain. That. Uh, but anyways, uh, then there are also uh, mules and H- Heine, uh or Hinny. Um, a mule is the offspring of a male donkey and a female horse, a mare. Horses and donkeys are a different species, technically, uh, with different numbers of chromosomes. I believe horses have 64, and donkeys, I believe, have 62, uh, Then, which is why mules uh, have 63. It's a cross between, and they... Um, yeah, split it down the middle. Because of that, because of the lack of chromosomes and all that, they also... Uh, most interspecies hybrids are infertile. Yeah, they can't yeah, reproduce. Yeah, sterile. Um, yes. Of the two F1 hybrids between the two species, a mule is easier to obtain than a hiney, which is the product of a female donkey and of a male horse. So mules are from, uh, are when the, the dad is a uh, donkey. So a mule's a jack mare. Yeah. And a hiney is a jenny stallion. Correct. Yeah, My yeah. head just exploded. Right? Yeah. I just, yeah. I, there's too much. On so in Sunday. case you're wondering how you can create the perfect mule. Yeah. Here's your recipe. Yeah, or if you want to make a uh, horse-filled uh, tribute movie to uh, Rocky, uh, you could have uh, you'd have to have a Henny be the Jenny Stallion, the Italian Stallion. <laughs> That's so stupid. I regret that. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, you can also you can we'll, also we'll crossbreed. Post. You can also crossbreed donkeys with zebras. Yes, holy shit! Here's this is where when you said when you said Blucifer, this is what really made me think of it because they were fucking just combining cool words. Here. Yeah, listen to this, guys. Dan's got some fun trivia. For so you. donkeys can breed with zebras. Uh, the offspring are called zonkeys, fittingly enough, yeah. which sounds like a, a candy that Willy Wonka might produce. Yeah, um, they're also <laughs> or some really good medication. Yeah, yeah. Or listen to this. Speaking of medication, if you uh, if you're a donkey that wants to work out with a zebra. Uh, uh, a zebroid. A zebroid. <laughs> that sounds like some Doctor Who bullshit right there. No, dude. Dude, it says that according to Wikipedia, a zebroid. Also. Also a zedonk. Zedonk, zorse, zebra mule, zonkey, and zebrule. Goddamn right, zebrule. Okay, but 
other than when we as humans put them in the same place to mate, when the fuck is a zebra and a donkey gonna get it on? Uh, fucking <laughs> after a couple drinks, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> wait till wait till the, they wait meet till, down at the local watering hole. Wait till uh, wait till the holiday party this year. Yeah. And, uh, oh, that'll shit. happen. This was uh, the this holiday is... party at the zoo that you're that you're saving money for. They so. used to they I... used to hook up more back in Pangaea, but <laughs> they've drifted apart. <laughs> I just, I, there's a lot of horse sex happening. Yeah. yeah. Donkey, yeah. zebra sex. Uh, the Offspring. circle of life. You know? Uh, mm-hmm. This is the best. Uh, <laughs> no. ready for this. This sounds like, it sounds like a fucking, like a, a video game villain or like something from like um, The Last Airbender, but offspring of a donkey sire and a zebra dam called a zebra hiney or the villain of Godzilla, <laughs> Donkra. They do exist. A donka. But they're rare. A donkra. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I'm yeah. learning so much. I feel like a donkra is regional cuisine from somewhere <laughs> in like northwestern Turkey. So if anybody, if any animal deserves uh, funds being raised, Kristen, yes. you should be raising money. Save the donkra. The yes, I Save should. Absolutely. I'm sure it's a delicacy somewhere over uh, yeah. in another country. And if it's not, I'm moving to a country and starting yeah. it up. I mean, they, they eat horse and ice. There's some lucrative money to be <laughs> yeah. making yeah, yeah, yeah. on some donkras. Oh, no, I've had to fight for them killing wild mustangs and, and other horses and uh, using it for horse meat in this country. Yeah. Where was... Uh, where, uh, Arby's. Arby's? Arby's. <laughs> Kid Rock songs, wild mustangs. No, no, no. Weren't they using, like, horse like meatballs or something? Oh, yeah. that was... Uh, what was that rumor about? Was that about Ikea? Who I think was it was that? Ikea. Yeah. 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 No, that they actually found horse meat meatballs. in the meatballs. Oh, yikes. Yeah. yeah and we cents. still don't know what a Lincolnberry is. So many so many questions. A who? Lincolnberry? It's a. It's, it's a that, like, uh, <laughs> sauce they serve with the meatballs. See, thank God I can't eat any of that shit. Yeah. I... Or want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or would want to. Uh, but I see people getting it, like, they're getting it done. It's yeah. the Ikea. I, I, they're, mm-hmm. like, shoveling it in their mouth. Course, <laughs> Ikea is, like, the most stressful place so to be. I cannot go to yeah. Ikea. No. I will have a mental breakdown if yeah. I'm in Ikea. Yeah, I they, have to, like... It's like a mousetrap. No. Yeah. I order my shit and I pick it up. Like, I cannot... People go in and lollygag and walk around. Yeah, I want to drop kick every single one of them. Going there on a Saturday morning is oh, no. perhaps the ultimate exercise in self-restraint. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, um, mm. Someone actually recently wrote a novel about Ikea, uh, imagining it as, like, a horror... Story. Oh, it is. It's called Horror Store I love by it. Uh, Grady oh, it Hendrix, is. and uh, basically they st- like some employees get have to stay there overnight, and there's some weird shit starts mm-hmm. going down. But mm-hmm. I would expect oh, that just any. It's already like a utilitarian hell. I don't know yeah. what it is, but it, 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 it's this weird dead zone where people walk in there and they just become completely mentally incapable of making decisions or walking in a proper line or or. Even though they have arrows. Exactly. Yeah. They just go completely dumb. Yeah, it's just it's duh. like uh, it's like if Lord of the Flies had more balsa wood. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kids running wild. I don't know if we've mentioned this mentioned this before. I think we may have because we've mentioned cognitive biases before, uh, mm-hmm. various you know mental mental thoughts and stuff like that. But there is a cognitive bias called the IKEA effect, uh, in which people place disproportionately uh, high value on products that they they help assemble. So like you feel. Um, it's almost like, you know, like the whole adage, like if yeah. you earn your money, you know, like if you pay for your, something with your own money that you earn, you appreciate it more. Yeah. You're like, it's like I that put this piece of shit yeah. futon together, okay, exactly. so I'm going to hold on to it for a while. It took oh, me yeah. three hours. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I recently moved after living in the same apartment for 10 years, and I could not get rid of my Ikea shit quick enough because I had it for that long. Because yeah. It's like, well, it serves its purpose yeah. and it's, it's cheap, it, so I it does. something. Yeah, it's it's, I know, right? Yeah. That damn screw. Yeah, that, that damn screw, yeah. Bill. I was missing a Bjorn Florn connector, <laughs> so it's always had this sag in the middle. But... Yeah, you got to get the clue clock. Oh, oh man. I tried God. to order one online. But I couldn't spell it. I know. I have to type in. I'm like, yeah. what's the word with these letters? How there? do I get the umlaut? How do I get the umlaut? Uh, shift, Control, Option Z, yeah. and the number two. Uh, <laughs> here's a fun fact too. Apparently, the IKEA catalog has surpassed the Bible as the most published work. What has the IKEA catalog? Has surpassed the Bible. That's why you find yeah. one in every hotel bedroom. Absolutely, right the next IKEA to your catalog, bed. Right? Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah. yeah. They're remaking Mission Impossible 1 with, uh, instead of Job 314, it's going to be <laughs> Ikea page 8. <laughs> God damn it. God damn, Mission Impossible movies are awesome. Anyways. Yeah. I can't stop staring at the Mars Attacks. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Little that dude little... back in the corner. Yeah. That movie was fantastic. It, it was, was one of the most funny. underappreciated movies. Of course. I, I always funny. forget 
the caliber of people that are in that movie. Every single, Every single phenomenal yeah. actor. And I always forget at that, that it's Tim Burton. Hey guys, well. so uh, hey guys, uh, hey friends, I'm going to make a, a a movie that makes no sense based off of trading cards. Do you want to be in it? Yes, please. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> well, it's like, um, did y'all see movie 44? Negative. Movie 43? 43. Sure. I like even numbers. <laughs> it's the I, I've, I've seen movie 43. I just haven't seen movie 44. The, I didn't the know they, they came up with a sequel so the fast. Sequel. In that, my head, they, did they have. Did they okay. fund that on Kickstarter or what? Because yeah. I know the movie didn't make too much money. So it's I actually an Indiegogo. Yeah, an Indiegogo account. I, got, I, I, I rented that movie, and I thought it was the funniest fucking thing on the planet. Sure. Everybody else thought it was awful. Yeah, well, there is that. <laughs> I'll have to watch it. I've heard there are some really funny parts. There are. And yeah. then there were some like, I can't believe that they actually just did that. Yeah. But yeah, so. It's one of those anthology movies that's just, you know, sketches and funny jokes. I'll just say Halle Berry is much more beautiful without all that plastic surgery. <laughs> uh, <laughs> disregard everything she says. Halle, you're always beautiful. Halle, you're always beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations on Extant Season 2. Extant. More Space Babies. Oh, my God. Uh completely off topic here uh we have a lot of we we've mentioned ikea before on this podcast because uh, it's you know it's one of those things that you can't not talk about uh but we've also uh mentioned the olympics a lot now here's something that i learned the other day oh yeah uh, yeah this is the olympic uh i'm gonna essentially preface just what it is and then i'll explain it a little bit more but the olympic torch relay that we know of now that starts off mm-hmm. all of the yeah it was uh it was created by the nazis what what it was uh Was-ist-os? yeah Was-ist-os? <laughs> I can't do a German. I'm going to need to work on my German accent. Yeah. But yes, the Olympic torch relay was oh uh, created goodness. by the Nazis. Yeah. Um, the uh, 1936 Summer Olympics uh, was the first Great of its year. kind to have the <laughs> the torch relay first appeared um, in 1936 Olympics uh, following, uh, and f- since then, then forth they've had it. But the uh, Olympic flame, um, we, we they used to not have the flame in the Olympics up until 1928 when they had the Olympic flame back. They brought the Olympic flame back to the Olympics in 1928. Uh, then 1936, they ended up having the torch relay, and it uh, it pioneered the modern form, uh, the modern convention of moving the flame via a relay system from Greece to the Olympic venue. Uh, now the gentleman by, uh, who uh, devised it was his name was Carl Diem. And he devised the idea of the torch relay for the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin that was organized by the Nazi party, and he developed it under the guidance of Josef Goebbels. The uh, The process was ratified by the International Olympic Committee and has been repeated at every game since then. Wow. Fucking yeah. Nazis. Yeah, Goddamn, right? Goddamn Nazis. That's going to be the, the plot of Indiana Jones 5. And they were bound to have one okay idea, considering yeah. the rest of them were so terrible. So awful. Yeah. So bad. I could say so many things, and I'm just going to keep my mouth yeah. <laughs> just, just, Highways are a bad idea, too. <laughs> I'm not pro anything. I'm just saying highways. I love highways. And uh, it was because of the Nazis <sighs> that we wound up with uh, Fanta Orange yeah. Cola. Yeah. Fucking Nazis. Goddamn yeah. Nazis in there. The, so. Goddamn Nazis. Na- VW Bug? Oh. Yeah, absolutely yeah. was. Yeah. A lot of... Uh, not a lot, but so, so, you know, I'm just gonna. I'm not pro Nazi, <laughs> but a lot of cool shit. I'm not saying. Gonna, you know, I'm not saying. Here, I, I used to have an old joke. Uh, it was an old joke. I, it was a bit I was working on for my stand up, but it, it was always like, you can you never. It's never a good idea to say, here's the thing about the Nazis, and then like follow it with like good things, because it's just, you know, it's like. Here's the thing about the Nazis, or here's the thing about slavery. It's always like you're, it sounds like you're defending it, but it's not. You know, I'm not defending. I'm not defending. Let's talk about how Chris and Sitch is going to murder everybody in yeah. Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Can we start Ooh, with that close again? one. <laughs> Dodge that bullet. Back oh. to ghosts. Oh god, uh, love it. Back to ghosts. Yeah. So that was the thing. So the Nazi, uh, the Nazis invented the Olympic torch. Really. Yeah. So course of the force that we that the nerdist supported last year was uh, essentially <laughs> invented by Nazis. Yeah. And uh, you know the empire. You can draw a lot of parallels <laughs> there. It's totally canon, Razzle. I don't know what you're yeah, getting at it's, here. Uh, you know. It's, uh, um, yeah. yeah. And it's unlike really the Nazis, all that money went to charity and not for hiding and stealing artworks from around Europe. Yeah, very true. So, there you go. There is yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, in other news, let's talk about fruit roll-ups. God damn right. Everyone loves them. Oh, fruit absolutely. snacks. Oh my god, I haven't had a fruit roll-up in years. They're so right? Good. They're so good. <gasps> I need to pick one up on the way home. Yeah, right? I had some Gushers recently. Oh my past. god, Gushers. Yeah. Here's th- th- can I tell you a funny story? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> so, uh... <clears throat> the shapes. So, about fruit roll-ups, like, everybody our age should know about fruit roll-ups, right? I fucking hope so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, they lived sad, miserable uh, childhoods. I mean, I wasn't allowed to eat them. 
Now, yeah. don't, don't get me wrong. I had to go to my friend's house. Yeah, to you had to go to the black we market. Not, we did not have that kind of snack. Yeah. Like squeeze it. I always wanted to squeeze, squeeze it. it. Yep. I was not allowed squeeze it in the house. No fruit roll ups. No, <laughs> no we fruit would have, by the foot. No. Oh, God, I love fruit. Squeeze were always a little too much for me. Like, even when I had them, I was like, ugh. Like, even though there's only like I four just, like, ounces in there. Squeezing them on people. Yeah. It was like, the, it was so. <laughs> I did. This, I this is why you weren't allowed she, to she, have she, them. <laughs> You're not sugar, even eating them. Pure sugar of four yeah. ounces on them. Yes. Well, and what yes. about, oh, Dunkaroos as well. That's another thing Dunkaroos I can't find good. anymore. What's a Dunkaroo? Dunker, you don't know what Dunkaroos are? Dunkaroos. You are talking about fruit roll ups like you're a snack OG. You don't know anything. Hashtag, hashtag, Dunkaroos. Hashtag, hashtag they were, doesn't know what a Dunkaroo is. They were uh, basically little. Uh, Snack Gramps. crackers. They came in a self-contained package. Uh-huh. There was a little par- a package that had frosting in it. The other ones were little cookies that looked yeah. like kangaroos. See, I'm not a big frosting person. Dunk them in. Be yeah. Why. yeah, but well, are you a kangaroo person? That's I like matters. kangaroos. So, <laughs> see, dunkaroos. It, 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 uh, I it's think like it, Teddy it, it sounds like shape. yogurt, like the gogurts that they have now. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like yeah. squeeze and slurp, grab and glurp. Yeah, okay. That. That's oh, their... Push Pops. Push Pops. Those were those. Those were the Push Pops. Oh, I love those the Push Pop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, fruit roll up. So every, everybody should know what a Fruit Roll-Up is. Yeah. They uh, were, uh... So I have no qualms. I'm on Tinder. I sur- I dabble <laughs> on Tinder. When I'm bored, I, you know, I surf Tinder and silently judge Just people. Just some real casual swiping. Uh, That's all that it was made for, was to judge people. It. Yeah. Period. And I, I've noticed a lot of girls are on Tinder, which is an app basically to just judge people based on if they're hot or not. Mm-hmm. And a lot of girls are like, oh, I'm not looking for a hookup. And it's like, well, you're on the wrong app because that's kind of the purpose what of Tinder. The whole, yeah, my yeah. girlfriend's on it, believe me, I know. Oh, yeah, she's cute. What's her name? I'll make sure to swipe right. <laughs> uh, no, don't. Don't. No, what's her name? <laughs> don't, don't. It'll happen eventually. It'll happen. My thumb moves so fast. On it. Uh, but anyways, uh, I've noticed a lot of girls, uh, ha- they have not looking for a hookup. Or not looking for random hookups. So on my my content on 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 my little you know summary, I put uh, not looking for a hookup, but a fruit roll up. On the other hand, <laughs> so I put this and I match with this chick, and she's like, "So what's a fruit roll up?" <laughs> no, for, she did not. She's like, "Is that slang for something?" And I'm like, "I should have uh, go to Urban that. Dictionary. <laughs> you need to put something on Urban Dictionary I'm for like, it." Uh, I would have been like, I should have. Like, yeah, I made a huge left. mistake. Yeah. Yeah. No, not to the right, to the left. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Is it too late to unswipe? Was she twelve? No, she was of uh, she was of age. <laughs> she, <laughs> was she, was she eighteen? Age. She was not she, violating listen, the terms of service. Uh, it was. It was after. Yeah, she was like. She's like thirty-one, maybe. Oh, yeah. Dear God. That's actually. Has she been to a supermarket? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, <laughs> that reminds me though. I had a uh, one of my coworkers uh, was on Tinder, and he uh, he matched with this girl, and they had a good conversation, and then he was out one night and he saw her in like a restaurant he's like oh how are you what's going on like who what's this and she was there because she was out to dinner for her senior prom because she lied about her age and was on tinder she's like you told me you were 23 that so much you are not so he deleted the app from his phone yeah (laughs) see that you just uh, yeah there are too many girls now that look like they're 50 Mm -hmm. when they're like 12 and i just can't get behind it i had to uh i had to go to vidcon a youtube convention and that was just a waking nightmare generations of bad decision making (laughs) unfolding before me oh god yeah i just know yeah parents uh come on get it together see this is why i like living alone with my dog and my cat exactly (laughs) like nobody bothers me yeah i agree i'm good Back so to fruit back roll to fruit roll ups. Yeah, uh, fruit roll ups—a brand of fruit flavored snack. Sometimes they would come shaped like a little pizza that you could punch out the little things, put on little fruit pepperonis on there. Yeah, sometimes they had like uh, if they were a red fruit roll up, they would have like a blue dye with pictures inside. Exactly, the fruit they could do pretty much whatever you yeah, wanted. Yeah, uh, they would made their debut in grocery stores across the U.S. in 1980. However, research for the product began five years prior in 1975. They were first manufactured by General Mills, distributed under the Betty Crocker brand in the U.S., and Uncle Toby's brand in Australia. Weird dichotomy. I don't know why Betty isn't, isn't worldwide. Yeah. Maybe Uncle Toby's just more trustworthy. Uncle Toby, <laughs> Uncle Toby and Betty Crocker got a, got a divorce. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why isn't she Aunt Betty? <laughs> yeah, well, she's, cause, cause, she was Uncle Toby's cause, girlfriend, cause, left for the States. Because Toby had uh, more of a marketing budget, so yeah. he made her take the last name. Classic Toby. It's so actually uh, Toby Crocker, but Betty's trying to trying to push in on the guy's yeah. name. That surname bullshit. She's she's trying to steal Toby's last name. I seriously want a fruit roll up now. Oh, so they, they were badly. very good. So the best badly. part about the fruit roll ups is like you crumble it up in a ball and you eat it like an apple. Oh you yeah, do that? I've done that. Yeah, that or where you had a I punched out every single one of the yeah. little mm-hmm. things and I would eat them all individually yeah. and then save like the and then the go shell, back for the uh, shell for the last. Yeah. yeah. So good. <laughs> 
<laughs> the serial and killer so approach. Like, and then they had, oh, right. And then they had the ones I'll that were like multicolored, yeah, yeah. multi-flavored, the and then you. For mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, uh, so they good. actually were predated oh. by another uh, fruit snack, Joray Fruit Rolls, a round fruit leather product from New York. They predated them. Uh, they have more fruit roll-ups have more of a rubbery texture than the natural fruit leathers, and though they're originally round in shape, they're now parallelograms. So, yeah. Parallel- interesting oh. geometry fact about your fruit snacks. Yeah. I know what, what valid point. What fruit leather? Yeah, fruit, fruit leather. leather. Can you think of a worse uh, way to market? Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, I want a fruit chenille. And Jure fruit rolls were uh, they were they've been around since 1886. They've predate the fruit roll-ups by you know almost 100 years. Uh, Jure fruit rolls are an apricot-based fruit snack produced by Joseph Shalhoub and Son, uh, Incorporated, founded in 1886. Was the son Tony? Yeah, uh, Uncle Toby. Uh, <laughs> Uncle no, Toby uh, Shalhoub. Jure, <laughs> Jure fruit rolls uh, are have been a, produced in New York City for over a hundred years. Ever since the founder, George Shalhoub, started a bakery uh, after his immigration from Lebanon. Now, the fruit roll is actually a derivative of the Lebanese confection, Armadine, which is a thick paste made from dried apricots. So, so there you I go. Mean, fruit roll-ups can actually be yeah. traced back to uh, Lebanese or, or Lebanon. Dense. It's denser. Well, I would assume so. Most thick pastes yeah. have that connotation. It's just, it's just, no, no, I'm going to stick with the it's regular. Just, yeah, but fruit roll-up it's sounds... Like a half an inch of fruit roll It's like this. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and it's an apricot. Yeah. Damn. Love it. <laughs> I don't even know what an Nailed apricot it. is, but uh, I like the w- phrase fruit roll. Oh, they're, uh, they're similar to like nectarines or sure. somewhere between nectarines and peach. Apricots are good. Dried apricots delicious. are good. Yeah. I would say they are the uh, all star of the dried fruit world. Dried apricots with some cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. On like a cheese plate. Okay, yeah. With like the nuts. Yeah, you know? maybe some uh, quince paste. <laughs> cool. Well, while you guys are talking about things I don't know about, I'm just going to start tender here. There's some nuts. Just going to get some protein in there. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's been a long week. It's been a long week. <laughs> are you traveling coming up? Did you travel this week or are uh, you always traveling? No, I'm traveling next weekend next and then the weekend after that and then the weekend after that yeah. and then the weekend after that. Are you going to uh, Paris anytime soon? Paris. Yeah, are you going to France anytime soon? That's really funny because I was in Paris, like California, last night. Oh, really? Yeah. What were you doing there? Um, I was Radio DD. Show? Oh, DD. Oh, that's yes. right. You treated yes. DD. Yes, yes. I, I was DD. Tweet. How fun was Which that? Which was. Unbelievable! I actually videotaped some of the debauchery. <laughs> I don't think that they were going to remember the next. Yeah, oh my god! And the, the entire way home, I was laughing my ass off at these people. It yeah. was just yeah. Oh my girls are special. DD is such a fun. It's so fun to be DD. Well, there was a moment where it was touch and go where I almost, uh, I almost threw somebody in a fire pit. Oh okay. Um, but then once we got past that moment, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> I almost. I feel like my life is always almost throwing people in fire pits. <laughs> yeah, well, I can imagine, because uh, especially if you're sober and they are not, yeah, uh, it might be hard to make them see the the error the, of their, ways. The error of their yeah. ways without uh, introducing them to a pit full of fire. Yes, <laughs> I exactly. Carry, I carry around a pit of fire just in case. Yeah. You, and just in case you. Hold cross on, me. I've got some kindling. I just need to get this fire going, yeah. then I'll show you. Well, you know, we had been, I had been trying to wrangle them into my car for oh, God. probably 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. And um, we just they just kept talking and talking. And finally, I got one in, and then he passed out. And then I got the other one came in, but then she had to go find the third. Gr- and yeah. it was finally, I was just like, I got out. I was like, yo, you're in my car now, or you're in the pit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like. Uh, did you stop at And then pet? they ate all my chicken. Oh, no. <laughs> Dick move. <laughs> so did, did you go? Did you? Where'd you get? Did you, you like get the? In the car? <laughs> where else are you gonna keep it? Bring it to the party. That's <laughs> weird. Bill. How, how, long, the, how long did you keep the chicken in your car for? Yeah. No, because you know how I'm doing that thing where I got to eat every three hours. Well, yeah. I had like one of those coolers yeah. oh, oh, and uh, I had some chicken, <laughs> <laughs> no. some but chicken I was lying out. Like, yeah, I got in my car and I was supposed to have my last it. meal. And they literally, the drunkards took my chicken and were like with their hands just shoveling it in their mouth. And I was like, y'all, fuck you. That's, uh, they ate all my chicken. I love being DD and going to get fast food. Because like when you, it, like it's so funny. 
to to have a car full of drunk people and go through like the fast food. Oh, we did it. We did it. Like, and, and I love the computers now because they have like the computers yes. that say what it is, and it increase like it's like you're pumping gas by the price just increasing. Yes, like, it yes. just jumps so fast by how they order. It's so funny. Ten tacos. Ten yeah. tacos. Can no they lettuce. Put, can they no wrap lettuce. it in a Dorito? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want no let- these. I'm like, who the fuck eats a taco with no, no lettuce? Yeah. 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 Me. Especially at Jack in the Crack. I mean, I who I orders do. tacos <laughs> at Jack in the Crack? Is it even real meat? No, it's not. It's not even real meat. Well, there you go. I yeah. go to Del Taco. I don't like lettuce, so I'll get tacos without lettuce. But uh, I'll go to Del Taco and get it. Right there. Okay. Well, I guess this is the first that I've heard of these tacos with no lettuce. You don't like lettuce? I don't like. I hate lettuce. Uh, Fuck lettuce. Fuck raisins. <laughs> Fuck raisins. Fuck Not even the dancing raisin? No. Yeah. California raisins. From the lot. 80s? No? <laughs> he especially hates them. Oh. I, they yeah. were fun. Yeah. They have their little figurines still. Yep. Yeah. Those were funny. Uh, Whatever happened to them? <laughs> Whatever happened to those races? They were tired. The yeah. yeah, they they spent too much time in the sun. I think. Yeah, and they were tired. Uh, Their dream has been deferred. Yeah, drive through drunk people at drive throughs are st- oh, some of the funniest. It was amazing. In the world. It was I amazing. would hate to work in a drive. Oh, of course. So, that would be especially on like a Friday or Saturday night. That would be a nightmare. Yeah. Oh my god! And then yeah. my it was my buddy's birthday. And he's screaming from the back seat, I want some fries and I need your taco. And I was like, oh, my God, this poor woman <laughs> working the drive-thru was about 120. Oh, no. And she didn't yeah. understand what was happening. What? Yeah. <laughs> I was what like, do you oh, want? just give us our tacos so I can take them home, please. Does it look all right on the screen? Is this what you ordered? It's exactly yeah. what she said. Can I get you any sauce? <laughs> Too bad. No, I'm not a smoker. I'm just extremely old. <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me, uh, my driver's ed instructor back in high school talked exactly like that. Like, hello, I'm Barbara. I need a ciggy. Right. And a- <laughs> she made me drive through uh, the drive through at McDonald's. It's like, I need some chicken selects right now. <laughs> While you were taking drive Yeah, time. I was like, uh, sure. Like, Do you want anything? Oh, I'll get you something. My Don't God. say I didn't ask. That's oh amazing. my god! I would have been like, "Can I have a strawberry milkshake?" Yeah, please? no, I just oh, I can't, I cannot do strawberry milkshakes. That's yeah. like my least strawberry milk, strawberry milkshake. Well, I don't do milk. See, I love milk. I do Ugh. dairy all day, every I will day. Vomit. No. In fact, that's what I'm going to do when I go home. Just drink some dairy. Just drink some dairy. I love me some get cheese. Down, get down with some milk. Yeah, but no, no milk. Do you drink shakes or no? Uh, like protein milk. shakes or or like or like, like uh, strawberry shake? Would you drink? No, you I mean I I get all. I haven't had an actual milkshake in uh, probably 10 years that oh, I've wow. actually okay. like drank. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll have like a sip of, if a friend yeah, gets yeah. one, I'll have a sip, but I've yeah. not sat down and ordered like a milkshake. Yeah. milkshake. Yeah. Okay. Is it the, is it like the lactose or would you do like a vegan uh-huh. shake or something or like a smoothie? I just hate milk. Well, I, I drank milk every, every single night with dinner uh, when I was growing up and mm-hmm. I sat down once when I was probably around 12 and I drank my milk and yeah. I got it from the table and I vomited all over the kitchen. Oh no. And that was the last time I ever had yeah. milk. <laughs> what? Mic drop. <laughs> what do you, what do you use? For your cereal, I, I can't eat cereal. I have celiacs. Oh, yeah. So well, that problem took care of itself. Yeah, so no. you're, you're a legitimate gluten free person. Yes, I am a legitimate, legitimate gluten free lady. Yeah. Yes. they are yes. real. They're not just the yes. trendy folk. No, uh, one of my cousins has that. Yeah, yeah it's horrible. Can. Yeah, it's horrible. And I'm I was suffering my whole life, and I didn't even know it until yeah. I got diagnosed. Yeah, it's a bummer. It was uh, sucked. Know. Yeah. Now we're good, though. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, because there's gluten-free everything. There's well, awesome. you know, living in L.A., it's it's um, a lot easier than, like, when I go home to Florida. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And oh. they want to just stuff fried chicken down yeah, your absolutely. face. Here's some fried bread. Here's some fried chicken and some bread and butter, and then you can have some fries. And yeah. then would you like Wash some pie for dessert? And I'm like, of milk. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat some lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have to take the lettuce that didn't go in the tacos. <laughs> exactly. Have a just give me that on the side. Uh, but uh, back to Paris here. I have a fun fact about the Eiffel Tower from Paris, France here. Uh, uh, according to – there was an article on uh, history.com that had 10 fun facts about mm-hmm. the Eiffel Tower. And uh, the Eiffel Tower used to be yellow. Fun fact about that. What? Yeah. And, uh, and That's fa- a giant eyesore. Yeah, yeah. right? The, uh, in fashionable Paris, even the Eiffel Tower must be kept uh, – keep up with the style trends. Um, apparently, over the decades, it has been a spectrum of different colors. Uh, when it opened in 1889, the Eiffel Tower sported a reddish-brown color. Uh, then a decade later, it was coated in yellow paint. Uh, then uh, the tower was also a yellow-brown and uh, chestnut-brown before the adopt, uh, the adoption of the current specially mixed Eiffel Tower brown in 1968. So since 1968, apparently the Eiffel Tower has been uh, Eiffel Tower brown. And here's an interesting thing about the Eiffel Tower, uh, the paint jobs. Every seven years, painters apply 60 tons of paint to the tower. 60 tons? Yeah. 
That's oh, a lot of people. God. Now listen to this. So this is what's interesting. So I've never been to Paris, France, or seen the Eiffel Tower up in person. But apparently the tower is painted in three shades, uh, progressively lighter with elevation huh. uh, in order to augment the structure silhouette against the canvas of the uh, Parisian sky. Interesting. So there's I only three shades of, uh, of paint going on the Eiffel Tower there. Huh. And, uh, I, only, I only saw it at night, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is it? Was it lit up? Yeah. Nice. And then they did this whole like light show situation. Well, they have one of those yeah, fountains well, synchronized yeah, they, to music. They were like, oh, right? It was welcome to the Grove. And then just yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, <sighs> the Eiffel Tower was once the world's largest billboard as well. From 1925 to 1936, they attached a quarter million colored bulbs to the side, uh, three sides of the tower's steeple, to spell in a hundred foot vertical letters uh, an ad for the French automobile company Citroen. So. Used to be wow. a giant billboard. Giant billboard. And uh, it actually was so bright that you could see it from up to 20 miles away. Holy crap. And Charles Lindbergh used it as a beacon on his 1927 solo transatlantic flight. That's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. It's wild. Wow. For We're France all speechless. France fact. <laughs> <laughs> France fact. France fact. Wow. We uh, are one of our, uh, one of my buddies, Jeff Dye, he's a comedian. He was on our second episode. Mm-hmm. And he's he, for some reason, has a wealth of rat fact. He knows a lot about rats. And, uh, really? Throughout the episode. <laughs> well, they're fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Throughout the episode, he would just be like, uh, rat fact. And then he would say like a rat about fact. <laughs> so we're going to call back to episode yeah, number so, two. Uh, France fact. For you longtime listeners. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, rat fact, ladies and gentlemen, longtime listener, first time caller. Uh, can we have more rat facts, please? <laughs> what were some of the rat facts? Oh gosh, do we I remember any? I don't remember. Most of these facts go in my brain and out. The uh, next. Understood. Yeah, yeah, it's like fl- like uh, there's flash so many memory. facts. It's flash memory. I retain it for a little bit, understood. and then like six months down the road, it's like, oh, here's the thing. And then uh, people are like, oh, how do you know so much? And it's like I don't. It just comes here. It comes and goes. Yeah, it ebbs and flows. These facts. Uh, there's approximately 70 million rats in New York City. Okay, so that's a lot. A, there's one. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of rats. It's, and they're probably all in the subways. Many. And uh, you can uh, you can actually eat rats. They're not uh, <laughs> like as big of a disease yeah, vector you know what, as a uh, lot of people think. Henry Rollins on the episode uh, last week mm-hmm. um, was talking about how he, uh, he had a rat. Didn't he? Yeah, he was eating many on one of his History Channel shows or uh, Animal Planet shows. Uh, he was a uh, he ate rat when he was yeah a lot of uh, street vendors in Thailand, yeah. Vietnam, Cambodia uh, will sell barbecued rat. Yeah. Well, you know, I found this fabulous show on uh, Netflix because I don't have cable, okay. so I watch everything yeah, Netflix, yeah. Netflix, Hulu, or Hulu, HBO Go. Um, yeah, I love the Amazon Prime, and then okay. yeah, that that's good. Um, but so, Idiot Abroad. Okay, I've seen it. Yeah, I've heard about it. With, I haven't uh, seen Carl it. Carl Pilkington. Yes. Okay fucking phenomenal show yeah. <laughs> but he is in i forget where he was it was somewhere like thailand or he was in china or i don't know so um but walking down the street all you see is vendor after vendor after vendor with these skewers of just grasshoppers and roaches and yeah. spiders and frogs and like all these random mm-hmm. and i'm like this uh, that's not appetizing to me i yeah. mean i know i didn't grow up in that culture or anything like that but any kind of like just it, fried animal on a stick yeah no matter if you put like a big hunk of meat on a stick like that we're used to, like a burger on a stick anything mm-hmm. on a stick i'm like not a big fan of yeah, yeah it's uh i i like a good kebab now and then but that's also has the presentation where it's like different elements like vegetables and, vegetables and, and yeah proteins just like a hunk of yeah. fucking meat on a stick exactly that's or that random... makes me more think like did you just get shipwrecked and you just grilled this on your survivor challenge anything with an exoskeleton i'm like no yeah i'm not gonna no if i want something crunchy i'll get a granola bar like i don't <laughs> need to be eating yeah just you know open I mean? a open a uh nature valley bar and then uh <laughs> And then they showed this one girl, and she's like full and just mowing down on this grasshopper. She's got like a leg hanging out. Oh, her the mouth. legs are difficult, I've like, been told. Oh. Yeah. yeah. See, I had, uh, I used to live in Chicago, and they have a thing called Taste of Chicago every summer. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like a big food thing. And they had, it was alligator, Cajun gator on a stick. I've had gator. And uh, mm-hmm. it was on a stick, though. Yeah, no, I'm delicious. good on that. Yeah. But the gator was good. It was like Cajun, it was spicy, it was very good, very good jerk. It's gator. like I can't do meat in a loaf either. No, no yeah, meat loaf. Oh, yeah, like like shredded and compressed into like a square. None yeah. of that. It, no. Yeah, he's a weird guy. <laughs> yeah. Meatloaf. Yeah, you know, he'd do everything for love, but he just... He won't eat rat. That. He won't yeah, eat that. that was a good song. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was his only song. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just vi- variations on it. I'm going to get so just much. Just swaps so out the There's lyrics. like one meatloaf fan that listens to this dedicatedly, and we just lost him. Dear Mr. Basil, <laughs> I took issue with the episode <laughs> dated. Where you made fun of meatloaf. <laughs> His name was Robert Paulson. Uh, Fight Club. There we go. Uh, yeah. Um, so we're approaching uh, our, the end of the episode here. Um, and... Um, Let's see. Here's one more fact. Here we go. The color mauve. Mm. Here's a fun fact about the color mauve. Uh, in 1856, the color mauve was invented accidentally by a young com- chemist's attempt to cure malaria. Instead of curing the disease, the ink was picked up by the queen and took Victorian fashion by storm. Now, for the, those of you uh, not hip to the color mauve, mauve is uh, more gray and more blue than a pale tint of magenta would be. Many pale wi- uh, wild followers, uh, wild followers. Many pale wild flowers called blue are actually mauve. Um, uh, I believe the lilac is kind of mauve. I th- when but, I think uh, of mauve, I think of it as sort of like uh, a pink that's somewhere between pink and purple. Yeah, it's um, it's like a very pale purple, almost like a like if you like if you on, like if you took purple, then p- took the saturation, the color saturation, and lessened it. It would be kind of mauve. Uh, mauve is also so- sometimes described as a pale violet. Uh, the synthetic dye mauve was first so named in 1859. The chemist that uh, was aforementioned shortly ago, uh, Sir William Henry Perkin. William Henry Perkin. Sir, he was a knight. <laughs> please, <laughs> all right, please. Uh, his, call me sir. <laughs> call me sir. My father's mister. Call me sir. Uh, then 18 was attempting to create artificial quinine. Uh, in 1856, an unexpected residue caught his eye, which turned out to be the first aniline dye, specifically Perkins mauve or mauvine, sometimes caused called aniline purple. But this new dye was originally called Tyrian purple and was only called mauve after it was marketed in, 19, in 1859. Dude must have loved Game of Thrones. Goddamn. <laughs> Tyrion mauve. Mm -hmm. Tyrion purple. Tyrion purple. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Cool. So fun fact about mauve. What what, what kind of thoughts do you have on mauve? Uh, (laughs) Well, growing up uh, in Florida, you would always see mauve like in any retirement community you would would Mm -hmm. venture into. It was a very retirement friendly community colored situation. Yeah, I think of any kind of grandparent having mauve in their house. Yeah, like those, like those ugly sofas or whatever, always. like mauve and like pale yellows, and, and like they would have flowers, flowers. Yeah, they and, would always have like, like mass printed watercolor paintings uh-huh. with like mauves and yep. flowers, and yeah, it's, it's very calming. Yeah, yeah, you know, keep keep the old people happy. And <laughs> yeah. Calm. yeah, we just need comforting mauve and teal. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's it's a very uh, Florida color. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. I've I've seen my fair share of the mauve. Mauve well, it's, uh, makes a great great uh, exterior color for a house. Uh, one of my favorite movies about the color, uh, Harold and Mauve. <laughs> God damn it! So bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing so many listeners oh with my God. bad jokes today. Yeah. Bad bad puns. Uh, fun stuff. Um, cool. So this is the. Uh, the wrap up session of the the show, Chris. Yeah, where can uh, people find you on the internet? Yeah. What do you have coming down the what line? What do you have coming up? Promote all your good causes, oh, your social dear networks, God. your your. Uh, you do radio a lot. I feel like I see you always post. Hey, I'm on this show. With I these do. Girls, I have two girls. I, <laughs> I have two radio shows. I've got one with my girlfriend uh, Jessica Hall that we're going to be starting this Tuesday um, at 11 a.m. on. Is uh, she the one on Tinder? T- no. Ready? <laughs> no, she's not. She's <laughs> no. She. Oof, that would have been. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, while uh, excuse me, while I type up uh, no. her name here on tw- on Twitter and she stalk is her. very happily married to one of the most amazing men I've ever met in my life. So cool. they're good on the Tinder. Fair enough. Um, I've got another radio show every you Thursday say, night. You didn't say what it was. What? What? Where you can see it? Oh, it's Where? on T Radio V. T Radio. So you can you can look it up online and watch sure. us actually. So. Nice. Yes, kind of like Howard Stern esque. Oh, I know. like it. Fair enough. Um, and then uh, Thursday nights I've got a show with uh, my girl Amber Lynn uh, called Rock and Sexy Uncensored. So it's kind of sex, drugs, rock and roll, awesome. if you will. Really cool. Um, yeah. And uh, nothing about beheadings or any like no. Okay. Nothing that kind of sexy. All right. Well, I, 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 yeah. and, the other then, kind of yeah, sexy. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, She's, she looks good for her age. Uh, uh, well, <clears throat> Anne Berlin. She got her head cut off by Henry VIII, right? <laughs> Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn. <laughs> I was like, fair enough. No, the, it, just, <laughs> there goes we'll, my, we'll talk. We'll talk my, after the mics about my, that one. Uh, that was really funny, actually. My history um, facts. 
Anne Bolin. I was like, you must have a fucked up Tinder profile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I like Anne fruit roll-ups. Super headings. into beheadings, fruit roll-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, oh, I do Lord. have a match on my phone right now, so fuck <laughs> off, Dan. Oh, my God. Uh, anyways, proceed, continue. Um, off, yes. No, I was just going to say. Thursday nights. Uh, Thursday nights at uh, 7 p.m. Yeah. on LA Talk Radio. Nice. Um, you can follow all my animal stuff. I'm constantly raising money for some sort of animal rescue, animal rights, conservation, something. Um, and I've got an event coming up in uh, on November 1st for Boxer Rescue Los Angeles. I'm going to be in Sacramento next weekend at the SACCON. Uh, taking pictures, signing autographs. Um, and yeah, so I have Twitter. It's just my name, Kristen Renton. Instagram, Kristen Renton. Uh, I reactivated my Facebook, so I got that again, Kristen Renton. So yeah, that's pretty much... Fair enough. That's all That's all I got. Really cool. Well, everybody be sure to do that because they're all enjoyable. I subscribe to all of those, I believe. I follow your Instagram and your Twitter, and they're very entertaining as well as thought, thoughtful. You know, I as try. As far as the animals go. Thanks. You know, I, it really makes me hate them. You know, no. I love that. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. I'm a huge advocate of, no. Uh, yes, so uh, follow all those, listen to those Thursdays, and you got a new show coming out on Tuesdays on... Uh, uh, yes. Yes, fair enough. Yes. Wonderful. Um, and then, as usual, you can like our podcast on Facebook, Today We Learned with Razzle and Dan. You can also find us on Twitter at TWL Podcast. You can send us an email. Do you have a fact? We want to hear it. Send it to Today We Learned Podcast at gmail.com. And hey, do you want to talk to us? Well, guess yeah. what? You can do that as well. You can find me on Twitter at Osteoferocious. And you can follow me on Twitter at My Name is Razzle2, the number two. Uh, yeah, you can do all those things. And also, um, fruit roll ups. So, a couple episodes ago, we had Seth Green on. And, uh, we talked about Skittles, and apparently they're sending us a bunch of Skittles, so fruit roll-ups, get on that. <laughs> yeah, fruit so, roll-ups. Oh, me too. Get yeah. me in on that. Fruit roll-ups, fruit we roll-ups. will gladly eat you. We will gladly eat you. Fruit roll-ups, uh, <laughs> send us. Betty Crocker, send uh, Kristen and us. Uncle some, uh, Toby, we want to hear from we you. We want your Australian. Australian. Send me some Vegemite. <laughs> some Vegemite fruit roll-ups. <laughs> Uncle Toby there. Oh, man. Um, yeah, and you can uh, listen to this podcast on Nerdist.com. You can... Uh, Download it on iTunes. Subscribe on iTunes. Tell all of your friends to subscribe on iTunes uh, and give us a good rating. And, uh, you know, tweet at us. Say hello. We love hearing from you guys. And uh, we appreciate all your uh, listens and downloads and everything. And uh, we, you know, shout out to Aristotle, our producer, again, for hanging out over there, being quiet, not laughing at any of our jokes like he does on the other podcast I listen to that he does. Thanks, Aristotle. (laughs) Ooh. Call you out, bro. Sensing some tension. (laughs) No, he knows I love him. Uh, cool. So, yeah, so that's that. And uh, thanks again, Kristen, for joining us. Thank you for having and, uh, me. Thanks, our listeners. And uh, as always, please spay and neuter your pets. Fair enough. Thanks, guys. Bye. Now leaving Nerdist.com. 